everybody, welcome to... Wait, uh... Red Wings Rant. Red Wings Rant. 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 Please. please finally Red have a Rant. home! Red Wings finally have a home. Yeah. Right. That was... Am I, am I off again? Is that why you were talking a couple seconds? No, uh, what had happened was uh, I saw you trying to collect yourself, and so I was going to just dive in because what ah. I think, what I hoped happened, was that I threw you off with my uh, yeah. CM Punk sound effect at the start of the show. Yeah, for sure, you you did. Right. <laughs> uh, Ken, what's up? Casper, the friendly ghost, has disappeared already. He looked good for the five minutes he was here. Too bad. Jared, is it true Matt was born with a tail? Hmm. Are you Googling that right now, Mike? <laughs> you lean forward. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. Um, uh, uh, yes. True. Yep. Tail and all. When you're born with it, you carry it with you for the rest of your life. Speaking of a tail, Mike, we have a winner for <laughs> we could talk about the Fantasy Hockey League. Hey now. Who won? Uh weird that the guy who was the admin of the league ended up winning the league <laughs> with a a mystery it, point at the end of a tie game. So we're uh it, it's never trying to figure out uh, there must have been a ref bump and <laughs> I thought I had this one wrapped up, but all of a sudden Trevor Zegris was benched for me, then Matt won by a point, and I don't know what happened, Matt. It that was pretty fun i thought we were going to be able to come to this episode today and uh mike can you do me a favor can you can you pull your hair back that little strand that's like across your forehead is driving me crazy I don't know um it was looking good all day <laughs> how's that that's perfect now there's no get all that hair off the forehead oh um, trying to look like hook from aew Man. I really thought we were going to come to this episode and we were going to talk about like, wow, how cool is it? We are in the finals and we're tied 132 to 132. I was also very curious, like how they were going to come to a solution. Like would it award, a, would the system say two winners? Would it say two second place <laughs> finish? No, it ha what happened is it sent you a text alert that said, oops, looks like you forgot to give the uh, admin point boost to yourself. <laughs> Luckily, you saw that text in time, and you were able to uh, adjust the final score for everyone, Matt. So thank you for your Wait. integrity. Hell of a job as the admin. Matt, Gary <laughs> Bettman couldn't have done a better job himself. I mean, like part of the story, too, we have to talk about how I changed the rules two weeks before to make sure there were eight playoff teams instead of four. So yeah, it was I smart to first still... get yourself in the playoffs, right. and then yeah. second to um, adjust the scoring so that you'd win. So, Matt, a lot of integrity in this league. People can't wait for next season. <laughs> I think Jared the, real, says, prize, the real prize should have been you get to be the admin next year. You get to fire Matt and then put yourself in the finals for a victory. So Jared, I'm sorry, but Matt Matt won. So he's probably yeah, going to make himself admin again. Yeah, the winner's still hanging around. Paid off Tim Peel. I think uh, you know we learned a few things here and there as the years yeah. go on as hockey fans. Um, but yeah. Uh, so that means we had, like we mentioned, yeah. A uh, a third place would uh would win our our award would Some win swag. our giveaway. That's right. We're going to give away two tickets to a Red Wings game or uh a Detroit Red Wings jersey. Um figured it had to be big, right? The giveaway because this this was you really had to stick around. So it wasn't going to be like a like our post kind of thing. And uh oh, the winner is here in the comments. That's right. Ketzel. I'm I'm pretty sure you won by a landslide. I'm gonna pull that up real quick. Uh Ketzel, of course. Um we have we have more of a tale to tell, actually. Ketzel uh selected the jersey. Uh of course, like I, I hope we all remember Ketzel's over in uh Atlanta, so it didn't make a ton of sense to try and give him a couple of Red Wings tickets. So he went with Simon Edmondson. Um, but here's here's what happened. And I think I'm going to call out the company by name um, because I, I called them today and they are like, oh, man, it sucks to be you is kind of their response. Um, man, are you throwing somebody under the bus? What, what is this all this preamble? What's going on? 
Uh, well, you gotta hear the story. Uh, so vintage Detroit uh fucked us over a little bit here, and they even huh. tried to like come around and say, ha, "You, you idiot." Um, but on their website, they have uh two different Detroit Red Wings jerseys. One is the old Adidas, and one is the new Adidas. Mm -hmm. uh, first one, of course, they list on their website to send Ketzel, our winner, a, a new jersey. Um, it's the old version. So Ketzel, uh, of course, I, I we're still going to remedy this problem, but <laughs> I still can't believe how fucked we got on this because the first thing they list, again, is uh, this Climalite Adidas jersey. And then all the way down at the bottom of their page is the Prime Green jersey. Uh, but they're they're listed as the home adidas jersey is what it's listed as on the website so i was like oh okay home adidas that's what Ketzel wanted types in edmondson pay for send and uh it's just Ooh. the guy on the phone i just i told him i was like look man i'm not the guy who makes a big stink but this fucking blows and i told him like we have a podcast so i'm probably gonna end up telling this story and he's like yeah there's nothing we can do so went after vintage Detroit immediately. I mean, I'll say this. I was thinking of a place to get a jersey for Ketzel. Thought of vintage yeah. Detroit first. Got to tell you, probably not going to happen again because it's the same exact price for the prime green and this other one. But Ooh. Ketzel, my man, wants the prime green, not the Climalite. And uh, because, of course, they decided to list the first jersey home it doesn't say climalite it says home official it's authentic that's what it was home authentic red wings jersey i was like that's it that's what i'm looking for click on it ketzel gets the wrong one and now you're all familiar with the story because i know there's a few other red wings podcasts that uh, swear by this company but uh, their response to me was oh sorry you clicked a button that says uh, customized jerseys can't be returned so you did a customized jersey and you can't return it. So, yeah. So, Ketzel, still, my man, we're going to figure this out for you. Like, I, uh, we were tweeting back and forth or DMing. But uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the company that fucked us. So, thanks, guys. Um, important follow-up question from Jared. Yeah. Um, is Ketzel getting both jerseys, or are we sending the messed up one to Tristan? Oh, yeah, of course, it's going to Tristan. We have Tristan's uh, address. We'll be sending that one forward. Jared, th throwing potential sponsors under the bus, I would have happily said yes. I will happily say no if they ever come back and would like to uh, what's remedy the, the what's, situation. What's this company's name again? Uh, Vintage Detroit. Vintage uh, Detroit. Are we going to keep shouting them out? Are we going to keep telling people? <laughs> yeah, I got to remember what not to use as my... Right. <laughs> That's my resource here for jerseys. Oh, um, all right. Well, nobody really cares. Like that's that's more of a me problem, I think, at this point. So we'll we'll move on to hockey. But I just wanted to. Um, you know, it sucks to uh, you know get screwed at the last minute. Uh, something Matt is I... well versed in as the admin of our fantasy hockey league. So uh, <laughs> Matt is yeah, the just, um, vintage Detroit of uh, hockey fantasy GMs. Maybe, let me tell you. Maybe don't. Maybe don't list your jersey. As authentic home Red Wings jersey. Matt, maybe and then, remind uh, us ahead of time that you're going to give yourself bonus points at the end of the season. So, oh, and also change the rules to squeak yourself into the playoffs. So, bravo, Matt. We're all really <laughs> proud of you as an admin. So, uh, this is this your formal resume to work for Vintage Detroit? Because you also like to screw people over, or what's going on here? It's a fitting, yeah. So <laughs> it's a double stuffed Oreo right. screwing everybody over. So speaking See, of screwing I don't like ourselves, speaking anyway, of screwing let's ourselves move on. over. Um, the Red Wings <laughs> are winning hockey games for some reason. Matt, right. what are we thinking here? What is going on? Um, well, we're really like not not just not just further furthering our chances of landing Connor Bedard. We are outside of those possibilities. <laughs> um. It's not it's not fun to think about, um, guys. And I, I in the moment, Mike, you and I discussed this, I think, over text. And I, you know, I, I think this is a solid debate. Um, would you guys prefer just I mean, a hard tank, tank it up or 
when you're in the moment, and this is my argument, when you're in the moment, you're watching these games, like it's one thing if you've given up on this team and you're not watching and you keep seeing the box score, say five to two. When you're watching these games, mind you, you're watching Marco Casper's debut, which we'll get into in a minute here. Uh, But first debate is first. When you're watching these games, you're watching Dylan Larkin light up the Toronto goddamn fuck you Maple Leafs with a hat trick. It's rude. You're watching Michael Bunting just get shoved around by Edmondson and Cider. At that time, and you're enjoying yourself, you are not thinking, gosh, I hope the Leafs catch up and win. All you're thinking is how great this win feels and the Leafs can go I don't know. To, to heck. Yeah, go to, to heck, heck with them. I got to start being nicer in my swearing. We always had those requests. Stop swearing. Okay, go to heck, Leafs. Um, I think I already said the F word. Anyways, here's the debate. Guys, I want to hear you in the chat. Do you want to win yes. <laughs> hockey games on the way out? Or do you just want a hard tank? Mike? Hard tank. I think I, think I, gave, I gave my opinion. Is there is there anything? There, there is no point to winning any of these games unless you just want to screw over Iserman and make it even more difficult for him to find a good pick in this upcoming NHL draft. I I don't understand. Um, you know, Casper, God bless you. You know, he started being a little productive, so thank you for sacrificing yourself with a fake lower body injury. We need more guys to step up with fake lower body injuries. <laughs> Don't have upper body. I don't care. Some part of your body. Just, oh, it hurts. Oh, no. You know, uh, let's get Sherratt, you know, uh, you know, centering the first line. That's what this team's priority should be. It it should be giving Sherratt as many minutes as possible. If he's not playing 40 to 45 minutes a game on the power play and the penalty kill, Matt, we're screwing up the end of the season. I don't understand it. There, there's no benefit. I mean, it's it's cute that, you know, ooh, we beat Toronto oh, oh, in their faces. But actually, in Toronto form, they've double screwed us by letting us win a game, game that takes us out of a potential good lottery spot. So Toronto, they double bluffed us on that one. They Trojan horsed us a victory to screw us into floundering for the next five years. Montreal, too? Montreal as well. Five to nothing last them. night. Billy Huso with the shutout. Both of them are rooting for the Red Wings to always flounder in the bottom third of the league without quite getting a superstar talent at the top of the draft. <laughs> so these teams, I feel like they're in cahoots and they want yeah. us to stink. Couple of great games from Perron. Of course, the hat trick's fun from uh, from Larkin. Perron's Perron really too. turned it on. You know what? He's upset he wasn't dealt to a contender at the deadline, so he starts peppering in goals just to screw us over at the draft. <laughs> uh dan b the year we win the lottery the wings will finish 13th place and move up to the third spot (laughs) dan you know then we'll we'll hear it like we'll move up we'll we'll all those negative spots we're at right now we move up 10 spots people will say like ah quit your bitching you guys won the lottery last year uh jared throws out there went out jim johnson says uh where's the soap for matt Oh, I like that idea, mouth. Jim Johnson. So far, comment of the show for Mr. Johnson. Uh, Blake throws in there, Lalone has to walk in the arena through the back door. Is that is that in reference to all of his winning? He has to hide away? Is that, Blake, I'm, I'm sort of lost. <laughs> uh, Jared throws out there, also, why help out other teams? Screw over the Leafs. They might uh, have to face Tampa Bay. I think this is what Jared is saying. Might have to face uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. Three games. Uh, uh, th- I'm sorry. Four games on the road. I can't even count. <laughs> um, so we got Jared saying, geez, might push Rod and Net. Another good idea. I like it. Double shift them. You know, put them at center and then let them switch and play goaltender a little bit. You know? Jim does throw in there. Great to see Perron pick it up. I did uh, I did want to call out, too. Like Somebody tweeted earlier today, one of our uh, our podcasting comrades, so he's, he's going to know I'm talking about him. Uh, he said, Perron, one of the most consistent hockey players in the NHL, and he listed off all the years and, and points he's had. And I wanted to say, maybe on like a 
like a macro level, you could call him consistent. On the micro level, we saw a very strong start from Perron. We saw him completely disappear in the middle of the season. <laughs> and now he's finishing off really strong again. I wonder, because I'm sort of like this, if Perron sees the light at the end of the tunnel, not death, but he sees the end of the season and he's like, you know what? I'm I'm back, baby. I'm going to put in a I, I'm I don't have to try for too much longer here. We've got less than two weeks and we're good. Um, I'm back on, baby. Uh, that's I'm, I'm I'm saying right now, like I'm giving Piranha a hard time for the disappearing in the middle there. But yeah. I'm also that guy like right, you know, in the middle of a long, arduous journey, you kind of like zone out a little bit. You kind of lose yourself right at the beginning. You know, you try real hard. And then, you know, maybe we're talking about like a project at school. When you get rolling, man, you, you start hard. But then, at you know, in the middle there, you, you kind of got off to a good start. Maybe you have a 10-page report. You've wrote that first page. You feel real good about it. You know, that intro is popping. Yeah. But like now you you've a, got... It's a group project, right? In the first week, you got, like, you drafted all your best buddies. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time putting the team name together. Oh, man, we're going to be the... Thunder Dingles, yeah, Thunder Dingles, and then you know the project's not due for another six months. You just don't do anything until like the last day before the six months is up, and then you try to scramble together and try to you know figure something out. That's that's what this season is right now. That's that's Peron. He is that guy in the group project who is scrambling at four in the morning, oh asking his mom if he can uh, get dropped off at Kinko's to get everything printed out for the big project due the next day. So thank you. You sound nice. angry, Mike. You sound very angry. I am angry, angry right now. Why? Why? Why now? <laughs> why now? This couldn't have come the worst time. The last thing we needed was points. Um, Ken Young, oh, new comment of the show. Thank you. I did nail it with Blake. Uh, yes, because of all the winning. Sorry about that, Blake. Blake, um, that's on me for letting that joke go right over my head. So I apologize. Uh, Blake, what's it like being uh, Edmondson, being paired with the greatness that is Sharat? Keeping in mind, Blake loves Sharat. <laughs> um i i think everybody kind of threw out there the the day of on twitter maybe an overreaction but it was like um it was that meme where you're like really happy at the first you know like the first square you see a really happy guy like oh and then you keep reading and you're like oh just the uh, edmondson in tonight playing with Sherat. <laughs> yeah I, I mean not my ideal partner but i guess if i i want us to lose and i still want to see edmondson if he's paired with Sherat, that should also give him 45 to 50 minutes of development every night because of all the shifts that i insist on giving him um we do have to talk too uh yes. so it's a bummer right mike you're on the side of no more winning i think jared's on the side of winning I thought Everybody that's else. what we were doing when we called up Nadelkovic. I thought that was take time. We're like, all right, let's give this another shot. Boom, boom, boom. Start filling in that, that loss column, right? Yeah. And uh, he, you know, started playing a little bit like first half of, uh, you know, 2020, what was it, 2021? Man, the years gets just so mixed up. Yeah, um, yeah he's like first half Nadelkovic. And uh, it couldn't have come at a worse time. Uh, I mean, we really need to get Magnus in there. Stat? Um, and start giving up some more goals here. I, I don't, there's no reason to win. It, do, it doesn't do anything. Interesting comment from Dan B. It's too bad Perron will be old when the wings will need veteran leadership in the playoffs. And Silver throws out there, nah, Perron has more in the tank past his contract with Detroit. Mike, with what you've seen so far, and again, I will die on this hill. Amazing start. Great finish. Mike, Where's your head at on Perron for next season? Trade deadline? Or are we keeping him around and we're going to re-up? Well, I think when you're playing the video game, right, you just want to get all the young guys you can um, and just play all the kids. But NHL does require a little bit of leadership, um, does require some sort of veteran presence to kind of help um, – you know, set things up for the younger guys, kind of teach them, you know, good, good habits going forward. Um, so I, the way that, you know, Pran has been productive and he is a great locker room guy, he is a great interview. 
I would be stunned if he was moved. Um, and I think that he's going to be there as kind of almost like a player coach, um, like a productive player coach at this juncture. So I, I think that he does still have value on this team. Um, even though we, you know, it, it's, it's a little like his efforts are being wasted now that he, I, tongue in cheek, you know, aside, it is a little bit of a bummer that he is still a useful player at this age. And, uh, <clears throat> You know, it's right, I, it's 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 not going anywhere. But I, I do I just, appreciate you minimizing my face while I speak. I, I made it bigger first. I just realized there's different layouts for this. Like just now, I realized it, and I wanted to see what it was. But no, I mean, ooh. I I I totally agree. No, see the this is the ooh one that you gave. This one is supposed to cut out our heads, so it's just our heads with the you know what our topic is. Kind of feel like John C. Riley, Sub Brothers. Hello, Miss Lady. Um, <laughs> but Blake coming in hot. I think another comment of the show so far, this team hates losing and that's a great thing. It doesn't matter where they draft. This team is going to be a force. Blake, I think, uh, I think you're onto something there. I mean, there's a lot of high character guys that refuse to tank to the detriment of the future of this team, <laughs> arguably, <laughs> uh, because my God, could we use some, you know, upper echelon talent on this team? And it's going to be really difficult if these guys continue to give a shit, um, show effort, and you know, win some games here at the end of the season. I, yes, I I admire their tenacity, um, you know, and the effort. It's it's really hard to do that on a garbage team with that. There's nothing at stake. Um, but man, I I I really thought that we were gonna try and do something with this lottery once we did what we did at the deadline. So it's. I, I think you're right, Blake. I just it just seems like it's gonna be to the detriment of the team for the coming years. Um even as well as Eiserman is drafting. It'd be it'd be nice if he was picking out of the top three instead of trying to find, you know, uh, the diamond in the rough at, you know, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and so on. Uh Ketzel throws out there, uh if someone offers a first, I'm taking it. So I think that's along the lines of keep him around. Uh Ken Young throws out there. Peron is done here after next year. Time to move on. I don't, I mean, I wouldn't say I have like a super strong opinion. I wouldn't fight to keep him, but also if the contract came down a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, I, I and, and we're going to, let's, let's come back to the conversation, Mike, of uh, having more of a luxury in our lineup. Prawn right now, thriving, right? Oh, he's playing those top six minutes. Let's knock that down a bit. Not as like, we're not doing it as like an insult to Prawn, but it's because everything else has elevated beyond Prawn. Like that's the situation we're looking for. We're not looking to take a dump on Prawn right now, but after next season, contract's up, a couple years older from, you know, where we're at right now. Like think about where that contract ends as well. Um, Third line? For yeah, thinking the, about the playoffs the at ideal, that point? That's a good yeah, player ideal, to have on your third. Yeah, the ideal scenario is, uh, you know, Brown at this age, um, you know, he's on your third or fourth line. But we've been pretty dependent on him because of, you know, where this team's goal-scoring depth is at. So uh, having to see him on the first and second line, I, I don't think that – I don't believe that's what Iserman envisioned. I, I think that he thought, you know, we're going to have Perron as a depth guy, not, you know, rely on him as a pillar of our offense. So, yeah, I think it, it it's what we've talked about in nauseam this season, about putting guys in the roles that they're supposed to be in. And so, Perron, bless them. You know, bless them for, uh, you know, peppering in those goals, still showing something at this age. But uh, ideally, you want to be able to move them down. I uh, Jim's actually bringing up a good question that's not in our notes or anything, Mike. But So we'll get to the Casper conversation in a second here. But you have experience with the question I'm going to ask you as a Detroit Pistons fan. But Jim says, Eisman knows that there's not a great UFA year coming up. My feeling is he'll get a goal scorer through trade. Great point. We do know Austin Matthews up in two seasons. Mike, yeah. the Detroit Pistons once made a bunch of cap space to try and land... I would say at the time, wasn't it uh, the first time we did it? Was it LeBron when he moved to Miami and Detroit thought that they could make a pitch for him? Or was it 
we actually got all of our cap space uh, the year before um, the, all ah. the good players were available because um, we thought we were going to be sneaky snakes and uh, we wasted it and got a bunch of garbage. Was that Charlie V and that was uh, former Chicago Bull alumni Ben Gordon and ah. who needs the follicles Charlie V V V Villanueva. Um, <laughs> I was waiting for that one to hit you there. Um, <laughs> Poor Charlie. I know. That's not really. Um, so, yeah, I guess my question doesn't really work, but um, is it worth being conservative one more year to seeing if uh, if you can land that big fish? You're also like counting on Toronto being like, yeah, and you're also. I, I don't think that it's worth it because those guys. Uh, don't really get a chance to make it to unrestricted free agency. It seems like the trend right now is to trade for those guys right before they hit it and then give them a long-term contract. Um, so I, I think the best bet would be, hey, Toronto, if you actually you know have the, the tea leaves, you're talking with his agent, talking with his people, and he's like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I need to reset my career because it doesn't feel like a Stanley Cup is in this this franchise's future. That's when I think you have more success. That's when I think you have a better likelihood of obtaining them is through trade, which means, yeah, you'll probably have to give up a sexy prospect, you know, some first rounders, but that's just kind of how this NHL works. Um, you know, the big I, names move in trades. Yeah, I, I like where your head's at. Um, it's it's a lot to count on a, a free agent market, like to turn your way. Uh, Decoy throws out there. Sebastian Ajo is also going to be uh, in that market. I, I would challenge to Carolina seems like they don't have the pressure that Toronto has where an Austin Matthews major change uh, would be more, you know, like Toronto has to make huge moves. You know what I mean? And I, I know... Like the fans get frustrated with the wrong players all the time. Dan B throws out there. Austin's not a winner. Don't even think it. I, st I, yeah, but I think that Toronto, Matthews, man. Toronto is not a winner. Yeah. But, um, I, I was going to say, I think Austin Matthews is almost more reasonable than Sebastian Ajo because Ajo is on a team that can fly under the radar and be patient because I don't think their, their fans are so. They go absolutely nuts for where they're at right now. So my argument would be Hurricanes fans will give them a hundred years. As long as they're competitive, they seem pretty happy. And uh, Toronto's like, we can't go another year. My back's really itchy. I don't know if you can tell. I'm scratching my back right now, like right in the middle between the shoulder blades. Oh, God, that feels so good. You but yeah, really, Toronto uh, screws you up. Really help scratch that itch, man, is uh, Austin Matthews swapping in uh, blue for red. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, righteous coming in. It's going to be two more years of jaded impatience before you guys are happy. Well, I will be happy when, right, we have we have a playoff team. So that's probably about two years away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. That... Righteous. I, I don't know if, if it, uh, you know, if you mean all Red Wings fans, if you mean these two doofuses, but absolutely. Yeah. I'm getting frustrated as hell. Let's not forget. I, I know a lot of people have been talking about like, we have to be patient with the Iser plan. Sure. Fine. Whatever. But like, when was the last time the Red Wings? You know, we're like in the playoffs and we we're like, oh, we got a great chance to win the cup this year. Like, it's fine. You know, we could talk about the years that we haven't been in the playoffs. What about all those shit years where we're just like, ah, oh, if we could just squeak in, we get to have another marketing campaign that says 25 straight years in the playoffs. Like, we knew out in the first round, done. It's been a long time since we've had like a legit competitive team that we can count on. And I think that's fine for a fan base. For myself to be getting anxious, right? Like, I, I just maybe anxious is the no, wrong it's uh, it's here. not that, yeah. I mean, it's not that I, I don't think we're out here saying that, oh, I wish we'd kept uh, you know, Bertuzzi and Heronic. I don't think that right. that's really a thing we're saying, but I, I am saying that 
you know, you traded for some first rounders, which, wow, first rounder. Yeah, but where is the first rounder? So you're getting first rounders in the middle of the first or the last third. And historically, it's incredibly difficult to get superstars um, at those spots. So you would have to use your own draft capital. But unfortunately, this team is, um, I think it was Blake who was saying that, yeah, they still give a shit. And we got to stop playing those guys right now because we have to find a way into this lottery to give ourselves a chance. Like, as far as that two-year um, you know, uh, number that you dropped in the in the comment, man, it could be even longer than that if, you know, you're not able to bring in top-tier talent because you are not doing it during, you know, unrestricted free agency. Eisman is not going to give up draft picks for a restricted free agent. And you have to try and find a way to trade for a team's, you know, best player, which is what it takes to get upper echelon goal scoring talent. So you're giving up a lot and the likelihood is not super great because of what we need and who those players are. They're, you're looking for like top 25, top 30 talent. So yeah. it's, it's very difficult. So the easiest path to get there is through the draft. And to make your draft easier, you have to lose. So floundering like this. 11th, 12th, 13th, it it just hurts your team. I I would say too, like remember like now I'm about to talk about a team that's going to finish with like one of the best seasons of all time in the NHL in the Boston Bruins. They have so much depth. They were totally fine starting the season without Marchand, like to the point like I thought they would be so screwed. Like I was like, "Ah, they're going to miss the playoffs this year. They're going to start like 0 and 10." Marchand will come back, but it'll be too late, right? Like, that's how much depth they have. We have a ton of depth, Mike, with, like, kind of middle six and lower. All that depth in the world. Boston is equipped with a ton of first-line depth. We're not there. So, I'm not trying to be a downer, but we also have to remember a huge part of, like, our success happening either next year or the year after that. And Mike said, maybe even longer. It's health. And we just got dealt our first blow with one of our huge first round acquisitions. And I'm not saying he's injury prone, but it's just one of those things. Like we have to remember, we, we have to find elite talent and they have to be healthy. This is so hard to do. So yes. Do we want to see big moves that feel like they're moving the needle now? Yes. Because like the risk, the risk I think nobody ever talks about. And it's sort of just dawning on me right now that when you build through the draft and you're taking all this time, right? You you need to have these, these youngsters develop. I'm saying youngsters, Jesus. You have the youngsters develop into elite talent. I'm not saying this is the wrong way to build a team, but the risk involved with that, with also not accidentally running into Robbie Fabry, who breaks my heart is going through another knee injury man that's not something you just like oh i'm not gonna draft the guy with a knee problem i mean sometimes you could see that but it's not always that easy to catch so yes are we getting impatient maybe for the move that's really gonna turn heads maybe for just seeing one of these guys go to the next level and uh, uh some you know marco casper simon evans and more insider lucas raymond way too young we're not saying any of them need to go we're not asking for them to win uh you know an art ross coming up in the next season but i think the ask for us to uh I, th I think maybe just the situation that there's worry there is impatience building um it it's to it should it should totally be accepted and normal at this point. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I, there's there's a lot of things and variables that go into any way you build a team, but they're most th this this is not foolproof. What we're watching happen with the Red Wings, and you guys are we're gonna give Iserman a hundred years. I know we will. I know that's why he was signed as GM because we already <laughs> love Steve Iserman. He's gonna have forever to build this team. I'm not saying to can him. But to like, let's not pretend like this was foolproof, right? Like there could still be issues that come up. 
We could have this plan and it all goes to shit because somebody turns out to be injury prone. Anyway, let's transition into Marco Casper. Um, he's hurt. <laughs> Alone, uh, Mar Marco Casper lower body will not be available for the remainder of the season. Just this one's more just a bummer. It's not like we're going like, ah, his development is tarnished. Like it was a week ago, Mike. I said I would not be surprised if Marco Casper is on loan next year. Yeah, but this injury to me screams uh, end of the season injury, not like, like, I don't want to ask Lalone if this is the playoffs that he'd be playing, and he'd probably be like, eh, it might be the way he's playing. So I, I, I would just hope we kind of see a few more of these injuries um, so we can try and squeak <laughs> our way back into the uh, into the lottery yeah. here. Yeah, we're we're twenty second right now out of thirty two, so we've got we've got some room. I think uh, who are we tied with right now? I should have pulled some standings uh, before we started recording today, but uh, it only takes a second to bring this stuff up. Uh, St. Louis and Detroit both at seventy nine points. Uh, we could still reach Washington too, but we have seventy seven games played. The two of us, uh, Vancouver's a possibility. It's just uh, where we were talking about <laughs> catching up to Philly a couple weeks ago. That definitely is not happening. Um, but there's also plenty of room, Mike, to jump up to 21st, to jump up to 20th. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a. Uh... Yeah, I don't know how you feel. Uh, we don't need to keep going deeper into this conversation. But um, hey, let's talk about Marco Casper's game. Huh? Let's do it. Put this. Uh, we'll put this on repeat here. Um, a little shine on that turd. Can I? Can we talk about um, how physical this game was for a guy who came into this game with an injury, and him playing like one of the elite elite teams of the NHL? Um, that's that's what I saw. I saw a guy that kept there. It is scrumming it up right in front of the net. This guy was so aggressive in his first NHL game. And and we saw the aggression too, leading to the uh, the big battle and poss potential spitting of of bunting, and of course, uh, yeah. Here's I think this is the start of it here, and then um, we're gonna see Cider Edmondson and Lucas Raymond jump in there, and of course, Mike, future piece of the core, uh, current piece of the core, uh, Andrew Cop. Can't forget about Cop was in there too. Oh. Um, got him for another four years. <laughs> Yeah, just, uh, you know, fire up the side. Yeah. Here comes the cop. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know what you guys saw, but I was I was taken aback. I I saw a guy that really jumped in there. And before we even knew there was an injury, like this guy just is not afraid to muck it up and get close to the net and go at it. This is this is something too. Like a lot of these highlights are coming right in front of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs uh, net. I actually, I'll uh, I'll do this. I'm gonna pause this for a second here because we've already watched it once. Um, I pulled this, but it doesn't. This I don't want anybody to pull. Like, oh, look at what a terrible game Marco Casper had. No, he started in the offensive zone only 15 percent of the time. The rest of the game, my man was starting in the defensive zone or the neutral zone. 85% of the time. So that's why we're not going to judge anything that we're looking at right here with, uh, for anybody, uh, uh, the podcast listeners, we're looking at uh, evolving hockey's expected goals against per 60 and Corsi against per 60 are, you know, they don't look great. But yeah, that's what we're talking. We're talking about a guy who played 85% of the time outside of the offensive zone uh, or starting in the offensive zone. So he needed to get the puck either out of the defensive zone or out of the neutral zone and into the offensive zone. And that's, I guess the point I'm coming to is how often that started, how physical we saw our boy and how often he was still getting the puck out in front of the net. He was helping this team transition to get the puck out in front of the net. Just you, there are times where you see Dylan Larkin score. Pretty sure he scored in his first game. You see, uh, we brought up Austin Matthews, what four goals in his first game. That does happen. We also know Marco Casper played hurt. But 18-year-old kid playing all season. Now he's got to get used to the Red Wings. Is going to play 85% of the time starting outside of the offensive zone. So they did not give him safe minutes. Can we we can all agree on that? And my man was just all over the ice and crushing it. Yeah. Like that, uh, 
Yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I, I want to no, get your just, thoughts, Mike. No, it's just nice that, uh, you know, like putting him in a kind of a, a no win situation and uh, he didn't completely have egg on his face. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's inspiring. You know, it makes you, um, you know, feel a little bit more positive about the future, especially because there's just something about the Red Wings and they see that blue jersey and I think they see blood. Um, and it looks like Casper's already yeah. going to be one of those guys who does that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as his, you know, his deep cut stuff, yeah, I think there's a lot to be um, happy with. And then the eyeball test. I don't think he really could have asked for more for a guy in his first game to go out there and just, you know, f f shit up. Uh, I was, I think there's a lot to be proud of, and uh, it didn't feel like, uh, you know, they were calling him up just for funsies. It looked like, you know, we're calling a deserved player, giving them ice time at the NHL level. So. Um, I think that's, that's one of the important things is you don't want to feel like these guys are just doing it just to, um, I, I, I don't mean to always pick on him when I do stuff like this. It's just, he's such a glaring example, you know, like a Jacob Turner, we were like, Ugh, man, we better not showcase this guy. Cause he's terrible. <laughs> we'll never be able to trade him. Uh, I'm talking about the tigers, you know, eventually trading him for Cabrera. No, this guy looks like he got called up cause he looks like he belongs, um, you know, more like a Verlander call up at the end of a season. So yeah, I think it's something to be positive of and uh, feel positive about. Um, you know, it's uh, you know that candle burning at both ends. We only get the one game, uh, but you know, again, just another reason for us to all meet up uh, next season in Traverse City. Yeah, Ken thrown out there, Casper or uh, Jared. Uh, I th- you, did you call out Jared? Casper looks like he belongs. Uh, Ken thrown out there. Casper was very impressive. He showed he can play in the NHL north, south, and crash the net. Love his game. Injury? Uh, decoy. Uh, he's sick with Casperitis. No. Um, <laughs> I did like that. Um, I'm pretty sure. What did, what did we have? Did uh, Lalone actually say it in this? Uh, just lower body is all we know. If somebody knows more, please throw it in the comments. As far as I know, just lower body. Um, I don't really want to harp on this. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Kind of kind of weird, no? That Coco, I'm going to call him Coco, goddammit. Coco plays a game with a known injury and then pops out. Is that weird? I mean, he's a, like, he's, I don't... A hockey, he's a hockey player. I don't know what we thought he was. Of course he's going to go out there if he's got a little boo-boo, so... I mean, are you telling him like, hey, you know, we we're gonna call you up to play in the Red Wings, but never mind. He's like, no, no, put me in there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I gotta I think kinda... he got a little bit of input on that. Like, are you healthy enough to go? And he said, fuck yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I don't, I don't blame him. Um, it's not too nuts. Yeah, I, I kind of put it out there. I was like, if if that was me in that situation too, I think I tweeted this out earlier. I was like, I totally lie too. Yeah, I'm fine. And then the next night. Uh, or the next day when he's limping into the locker room or whatever, and they're like, what the fuck's going on here, Casper? Coco? Coco, what's going on? You know what it is? This is me fighting how quickly everybody came up with uh, with Casper as, as like, just let's just call him Ghost. I, I can't do it. I, need... I kind of like I kind of like the Ghost. Um, you do? Yeah, everybody kinda, likes he it. He does kind of have to shimmer and materialize and score a few goals, but I do like the Ghost. I mean, it writes itself. Well, I'm not a fan right now, but I know I will jump aboard. Just like I want you guys to jump aboard the DraftKings. Um, wait, what do you call that? Uh, bandwagon. That's right. Uh, underdogs, upsets, unbelievable action from DraftKings Sportsbook. The biggest tournament in college basketball is over. Whoops, pulled up the wrong one. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 on... Um, Hmm. Let's call it uh those there's specials on DraftKings because the tournament's over. Uh <laughs> go ahead. Oh Jesus. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Uh and use uh, promo code THPN. New customers can bet five dollars and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly. Win or lose, only a DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. That's right, guys. DraftKings Sportsbook. You know, I've been playing it. Former, uh, former sponsor, DraftKings. Let, let me. Is they're out the door here. Per, personal experience. Um, yeah. Mike, 
Marco yeah. Casper night. DraftKings, you could bet on Marco Casper potentially scoring in his first game. I was in Las Vegas on vacation with my wife. Humble walked break. up to walked up to the sports book. Please, uh -huh. I'd like to put money on Marco Casper scoring tonight. And they said, well, first they were like, I don't know, what's a Red Wing? Then when we figured that out, they pulled up the NHL sheet and they're like, yeah, you can't bet on that. I was like, are you, are you kidding me? I can't give you money for Marco Casper scoring tonight. And they're just like, yeah, that player's not on this list. So fun, fun, fun. DraftKings is better than a Las Vegas sports book in my humble opinion. So yeah, guys, wow. check out DraftKings Sportsbook to have actual fun betting. Uh, if, I if thought you that want. they would have had more fun with the, uh, um, like the openness of it, you know, like, yeah, we'll give you a 20 million to one odds. This isn't even a real. Player. Yeah. It's just some, <laughs> <laughs> guy's just writing his dad on the ballot yeah go ahead bud how much you want to put down let's double it you, you want to triple it triple it you know what you know damn the red wings by the way if i had gotten that bet because you're not allowed to use DraftKings in vegas um but if i if there was a marco casper at the vegas sports book and the red wings decided to not tell everybody that he had a lower body injury which i'm sure played a role in I'm going to say the no goal that, that ended up happening. Um, yeah. You know, Red Wings, screw you. Even though I didn't get to bet. I did put down a five-game parlay. And uh, part of that was I bet the Red Wings would win. But goddamn New Jersey Devils. You start got betting for something honest, like uh, professional wrestling. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. If if the Devils had won, I would have brought, I, I bet 100 bucks. I would have been coming home from Vegas with three thousand dollars, but the Devils fucked it up. Can you? I like. I've never landed four games on on a parlay before. I did yeah. five games for some dumb reason, and then the Devils they didn't just lose. Like after the first period, I think it was the Jets. I was like, oh, okay, so this is over. It was like four to nothing. Stupid Devils. God, yeah. I hope they if go. There's out one the thing round. that people want. If there's two things they want, it's to hear about our fantasy hockey trials and tribulations. <laughs> if it's another thing, it's mad placing bets. Two Some people, people like those conversations, for. damn it. I'm sure they do. Matt, do we have any other Red Wing points for this episode? Yeah. There we um, go. Simon Evanson doing pretty good. I don't know why I pulled this. Like, There's not much you could pull from. This is 100 minutes of Edmondson. This is 14 minutes of Marco Casper. But I thought Edmondson looked pretty good. I mean, the expected goals four per 60 is in the right spot and like everything's moving in the right direction. And, uh, you know, we were reminded earlier from Blake, he has to drag around Ben Sherratt. So one could argue that Simon Edmondson's <laughs> numbers are better than Cider's when he had to drag around Sherratt. And we wow. talked last week. Yeah. Somebody asked us last week, or maybe it was just on Twitter, like who has the higher ceiling. And I, this might be me playing a lot of NHL 23 this year and uh my captain simon edmondson I mean, is edmondson. 40 years old it's edmondson no question he's right taller. okay he's so taller. yeah that's where okay yeah just the height yeah. <laughs> it's the higher ceiling you piece of garbage um he's got a I... gown like like here's gandalf my... oh the here we go uh here's some fun stuff that we can discuss um prashanth pulled this today oh mr Iyer. Yeah. Defense, defenseman, offensive and defensive expected goals above replacement per 60. Jake Wallman, Mike. I don't know. I can't, I guess I can't get my mouse over this. Um, he's in, he's in the fun zone, the all around great defenseman zone, uh, along with Kale McCarr, Adam Fox, and Mike, we're looking for some right side defensemen. Do you want to jump into that conversation finally? Oh, I see somebody in that uh, same quadrant there, Matt. Um, he's he's about uh, what is he about five thirty from uh, Mr. Wallman there, Matt. Yeah, let's uh, everybody hold their breath. We're gonna jump through a bunch of slides. Ah! All right, there he is. There he is, Mr. Uh, Sexy I, himself. I promised Ketzel that we talk about him today, David Severson. Like we want to talk about a free agent market that is kind of tough to figure out what's going on. So we'll back up a slide here. Um. I, I kind of looked at it as like, yeah, there's there's names on this list that we all recognize. Uh, the Klingbergs, the Dumbas. And we're talking like, I'm trying to fill out the right side of the defense. 
Um, I'm going to make an argument for how you make Klingberg work, especially after this poo-poo season and how much uh, his ask better come down. Um, but yeah, the Klingberg, Stumbas, Eric Johnson, these are not guys I'm like kicking down doors to grab, but Damon Severson. And it's funny too, Ketzel threw out there today. Um, I see he's in the chat still. He threw out there today on Twitter and I was like, how long has Ketzel been following along with us? Because we've been asking about Damon Severson coming to this team for such a long time. And it all started the first time that I had him on my fantasy hockey league, which was not this one. But I fell in love with the guy. And like we were just talking about, uh, we'll pull up his uh, J Fresh player card. 94% projected war percentage. And this isn't one of those where a guy's buried on the third pair. No, we can start building out our second pair. That's right. Even strength offense, top 99%, top 1%, right? We don't want to say top 99%. He is better than 99% of people. Yes, that's a great way and, of putting it. And animals. Uh, and the positive for the defensive side, for a penalty kill, for finishing. And I'm not saying, like, we're not looking at, like, Connor McDavid level finishing, but I think we need to kind of nickel and dime this thing get as much finishing or at least guys that show while they're on the ice that plays are set up that can be finished or they're finishing themselves. We need to add as many of these guys as we can. So if we're looking at three years at their history and they have a positive finishing uh, projection and result from the past few years, bring these guys aboard. Damon Severson, one of those guys. This is a guy I think you might be upgrading Phil Peronic on your second pair. What do you guys think? I don't hate the acquisition idea. Um, I do think that at his age 28 season, he's already making four mil. I do think he's going to be asked for a little bump ski um, and pay. So are you prepared to pay Damon six or seven mil? Almost, uh, you know, what you're paying Lark. Yeah, let's do it. Matt is in. Uh, I mean, I mean, do you have a, a cap? What's your what's your ceiling for what you're going to pay this guy? I think I, I would have said that he would have been less than seven. <laughs> Hold on. Decoy uh, with a late bid for a comment of the episode. Ben Sherrod is better than 15% of animals. <sighs> I'm going to push back because I'm going to make you name those animals, Decoy. But, Matt, continue. I didn't see that. Oh, there. It just came up. <laughs> Uh, Ketzel said, I'll give him what I'm paying Sherratt. Ooh, burn. Wait. No, it's not. I, I, yeah, I definitely pay more Everson's than Everson's uh... like, I'm at least 94% better than Sherratt. So you have to pay me more <laughs> than that. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I, I will say that um, we have a lot of room. I, I like anything under seven. Wow. Decoy's right there, too. Six, five years? I don't know. But I haven't thought too much about the years, but I know I feel pretty good about Damon. And uh, that gets us into territory of like, you know, he's 28 now. You're getting into the Sherratt and Andrew Cop situation, which I hate is when you're paying these guys past their prime. But to solve a problem on the right side of the defense, you have, you have a solution coming up uh, in free agency. You also have a guy who I think will come way under six, way under five because of his crap season. John Klingberg, who got traded from the Ducks. Here's the thing. We talked about this before the season started. We all know that he struggles defensively. We also just talked about how Marco Casper spent 85% of his game outside of the offensive zone whenever it started. So you know what? You put Klingberg out there on the power play and you put him out there when you goddamn are starting in the offensive zone or at least in the neutral zone. Don't put the guy out there to start in the defensive zone. You can solve some of these problems with some pretty easy coaching decisions. And I trust Lalone. If you guys, oh, you guys don't trust Lalone? Oh, I can't believe you are, you, are you even Red Wing fans? Come on, you guys. I trust Derek Lalone. I'm sorry. I'm just being a dick now. But yeah, this is this is another option rolling through. It's a, it's a weird Mike, bit, you look man. so confused. Yeah, he's got a great voice. Um, I just saw him say the F word the other day in a broadcast. Um, I'm a big fan of Derek Lalone. Uh, uh, yeah, the Klingberg price should be really uh, coming at a discount now. Um, you talk about a guy who screwed this up. 
for himself. Uh, he he might have cut <laughs> yep. that salary in half. Um, and I can't imagine anybody's going to want to give him anything elongated. Um, so I think he's looking at another one ski. Um, and it couldn't have come at a worse time here as he crosses, uh, you know, into the next decade of his life. Um, I feel like this is a guy you could maybe get for uh, maybe a little bargain, maybe a three and a half, um, something under four. That'd be uh, pretty ideal. Uh, I do like Jim threw out there getting the conversation started really early. Uh, what are you guys paying Mo? And I think the best thing we have going for us right now is Kale McCarr's contract. He's at nine million right now, and I think I think we would actually be able to benefit from cider. We love cider. You know, Mo cider is amazing. This is a core. This is a pillar of this team for years. Whatever the number is, it also has to be attached to eight years. What do we have? Adam Fox at nine and a half. We also know that as of right now, which this could all change next year. So this is where I'm going to say, I think you can get Mo for under nine. Is that the production just isn't at those Kale McCarr levels. So when you're in those discussions and Ketzel, I, I know where your head's at, Ketzel. 10 mil easy. I know where your head's at. If Adam Fox is at nine and a half, Kale McCarr is at nine and the production's a little bit underneath that. Would I pay him nine and a half? Hell yeah. Give him nine. Give him 10. I'm right there with you, Ketzel. I have no problem making sure Mo is on this team forever and very happy. I could tell him a whole story and say, look, man, you're going to be the better all around defenseman compared to these other two doofuses in New York and Colorado. And I'm letting you know I trust you with this contract that's bigger than the two of them. Let me but, uh, matumbo, let me matumbo that number right there. Uh, me and uh, Joe Diamond are going to push back because uh, it's not that he doesn't deserve 10. Just don't think he gets it. I thought for sure. Did I not say well, that? Larkin. Um, oh, he had one more comment that just came down a little bit, a little bit later. Um, after watching Larkin kind of get what I think is lowballed uh, for how much he has to contribute to this team. Um, emotionally as the captain playing all, you know, three thirds of the ice. Um, and Hey bud, uh, really appreciate you donating your prime to us. Uh, we might have a playoff season once. So thank you. Um, knowing that all those things went into account and he still took what I think is a low offer. Um, and seeing what ciders like, um, you know, meat and potatoes, goal scoring production is. Yeah, he's not getting 10. He's getting less than Fox. He's getting less than Makar. And it's okay. He's just That's great. He's, he's just not as good, but he's very good. He's, you know, probably a mil or two below that. And that's okay. That's what yeah, he's probably I, gonna get. Especially with the it's like, you know, there's a hometown discount. There's the uh Iserman Voodoo Jedi Mind Trick discount where you end up taking a couple million less per year for some reason, which I it baffles me. I mean, I, I would get more, but uh here we are. So yeah, he's no. not gonna get 10. It's it's a great point. It's two conversations, right? Would you pay him, Ted? Yeah, sure. I don't think, like I said, under Kale McCarr, under Adam Fox. That means under nine to me. Yeah. Um, so I think we've had some shout outs to eight. Derek Hand at 8.9. Dan B, $8 million bridge deal. Oh, shit. Dan, we're fucking ourselves hard on that one because many skin on 14 when that one's done. Um. I, I'm signing him for eight. I want to, I want that number as low and long as possible. <laughs> um, if that, if we, if bridge deal comes into play, because uh, what did Ketzel say? If we get Mo under nine, it's a franchise changer. Totally agree. Because you got to think too. Like we just we brought up the Boston Bruins earlier. Wow, how have they had so much success for so long? It's because these guys are taking these contracts that are about the team. I. You and I spent a whole year before Larkin signed a contract saying, this is what we're okay with him getting paid. And he came well underneath that, right? So I think right now they're building this similar Boston Bruins type culture. Yeah, I mean, where it's these guys like are the Bruins. Taking less than they're actually worth, except yeah. uh, except right now for Pasta. You know, Pasta's at 11 and 2-5 now. Well, he could like probably the, get paid more. It's like the, the Bruins and the... Uh, it's like they all took Tom Brady contracts when he was a New England Patriot, where they purposefully would take less money for the benefit of the team. 
So I guess that's what the Red Wings are doing. But, uh, you know, we've yet to see that payout yet um, as far as winning goes. But, uh, you know, still got many more seasons ahead of us. So we'll try not to be jaded and impatient. Or at least be will be less jaded and less impatient. I do like this comment. This is kind of going places. Uh, Ketzel, the problem is Larkin could be replaced. Mo is pretty much irreplaceable in this league. Like, great point by Ketzel. How long are we going to be talking about the right hand defenseman problem? Um, Joe thrown out there. If Larkin could be replaced, why don't we just get his replacement to play second line center? Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I know where Joe's coming that from. One too, um, cause there, there aren't a lot of those guys. Ketzel does throw like, it wouldn't be easy. I think, I think, uh, maybe another way to put this too, in, uh, especially in your favor here, Ketzel, but like there are teams that clearly have, you know, centers that have higher production rates than Dylan Larkin. I guess if it so was so easy, why do we have why do we have one player who can score a point a game? If what was so easy? Like replacing a Larkin. Nobody's saying it's easy. If it's I, I don't think it's easier. I think it's also a pretty pretty large endeavor, and it's why this team is a flounderer instead of a, a playoff team. I wonder I don't argue with any of that. I might make this really boring. Um Yeah, I think this is more more or less. I just like, you know, like if you take Ketzel's point and just stick with the idea, like I think the center position on the first line, based on what we see from teams that are on their way into the playoffs, there are higher production rates. So that that could be replaced. Like there are like Larkin could make Lucas there. Raymond be a um, you know. Calder contender where, mm -hmm. you know, I know it's Sherratt, right? And I don't know what kind of curve we even want to grade him on, but he was, he was so average to below average. It looked like, Oh, I guess ciders in a sophomore slump. So I don't know if that means one is better <laughs> so, than the other at, at carrying, you know, uh, youth or ineptitude, but it just feels like, I don't, I don't even know why we're having this argument. Like they're yeah. both incredibly important to the Red Wings. Yeah, you're right. I mean, both I'm I'm hopeful are here to stay forever. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, where were we? We got stuck on this. All right, back to Klingberg. All right, I made my case. There's a way to make them work. There's a Rad Kugudis. That's an older fella. You have a much shorter contract to worry about. Um, moving forward, I don't unless. Unless Steve gets bamboozled again and we're going to be rolling a line of Sherratt and Gudis next year <laughs> on the third pair and uh, they're, mo they're our most expensive uh, D pairing, that would be awful. I think it's more or less there. there is an option. This isn't the option. I, th I think I landed on the option. And of course, New Jersey will sign him and none of this will matter because New Jersey's got some money. Um, or restricted free agent market. Mike? <sighs> You know, I uh, I think it's a sexy route to go, but uh, the Red Wings refuse to give up draft picks, even though we do have a little little bit of a surplus here. So this might be a year to think about it. Is there might be something to the conversation too that the Vancouver Canucks were like, we need another right hand defenseman. That this might be an easier contract to snatch away, if I may. They trade for Heronic. This might be something where you're not, you know, like we've talked in the past about stealing Pedersen from uh, the Vancouver Canucks. And part of that conversation was, how much are you going to pay Pedersen to, to steal him away from Vancouver? I don't know if you have to do that, but this is also a representation, too, as a restricted free agent. Trade conversation could happen as well. Red Wings have quite a few of these. Wee! Um, and you've also got an Evan Bouchard conversation where... Woo! Offense is there, but you got to remember, you know, sometimes this gets a little bit of a bonus from those power play numbers as well because he plays on the team that has Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Yeah. So, always got to think about that. So, I did actually bring up this early because obviously restricted free agents, uh, converse, trade conversation exists. Um, but moving into 2024, 
maybe a couple of guys. You get them a little bit earlier before they're unrestricted free agents. Maybe we talk about a Dante Fabro, 24. This is now we're leaning more on the defensive side, finishing still in the 60%, according to the J Fresh player card. Think again, very important. We start eyeballing the finishing square for our J Fresh player cards in the free agent market. But maybe we subtract a little bit of finishing and get an overall better second pair right side defenseman from Carolina. And to the point I made earlier that they will do anything to keep Sebastian Ajo and the fans will be happy. I also think in a market that you can lose a right side defenseman. And right now for podcast listeners, we're looking at Brett Pesci, a uh, 27 year old. He's got two years left on his. So we're talking, he's got this season, the next season. So we'd be trading early for Brett Pesci before his contract runs out. Um, I think you'd have to look at like a Carolina hurricanes, just complete disaster in the playoff, like a four game sweep. Boom. Done after this season. So the likelihood of it happening in the off season, pretty low, but uh, maybe they go out in the first round and they struggle next year somehow, maybe a ton of injuries that we could get Brett, but um, kind of. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. If you're not the trading, best name, I think if you're not trading for this guy, you're uh, you're in some hot water because he's going to be turning 30 right by the time that contract expires. Um, right. So maybe um, another name too. You're really leaning in the defensive side here. Uh, Dylan DeMello. The, uh, what's funny, the conversations right now uh, coming from uh, Dom Lu Chisholm, Lu Chisholm uh, about his questioning of Connor Hellebuck as a Vesna candidate. Because the more he digs into these numbers, he thinks that the Winnipeg defense and what they've built, and of course, a lot of that goes into like game planning, is why Hellebuck looks so successful compared to it just being Connor Hellebuck. Very interesting, but that would also mean Dylan DeMello, uh, a third pair, very cheap, could be something that you're adding to this team for like one or two years while we try to figure out the right side of the defense. And Winnipeg, woo, headed all the way down to the gutter with us. Could be head. Mm hmm. I think it's a worthwhile conversation. Uh, definitely a cheap conversation. I think if you have confidence that the Red Wings can figure this out in a real solid solution on the right side of the defense through I mean, drafting. I, I don't know and... if this guy's uh, Chris Paul, Matt. I mean, we'd be picking him up when he's like, you know, our age at 35 and 36 here. He's, uh, he's got some long teeth there, Matt. DeMello. That's... That's a reasonable call out, but that's where I'm talking. Like if you are confident that the Red Wings are going to figure this out, this is an option with a team where we've talked about the struggles. We have a left side defenseman who fills out our right side. A guy who also sucks and Ben Chirot. If we want to replace Ben Chirot with a right side defenseman, there's a cheap option in Winnipeg who's going to be looking for draft picks. And need I remind you of this load of draft picks. Dylan DeMello is not going to collect you a first round pick or we definitely don't have to ship out a first round pick to pick them up. So it's, it's an option. Ooh, a nice little I fourth know, rounder. I don't hate it. I don't hate it myself. You guys might hate it. We'll, we'll check. Check. Oh my God. There's so many comments we missed. Um, all right. Where's Ketzel with his love Pesci. Uh, or Jared or Pistic. <laughs> uh, Ketzel on, on paper, Ethan Bear's great. Teams just have not been able to get the best out of him. Um, Jim thrown out there. Don't forget, we took Zadina instead of Quinn Hughes. Jim, why? Too soon, Jim. Too soon. <laughs> um, decoy Dante career, and it's uh, is near its peak. Well, I here's here's my argument, right? We're talking about going back to Dante, 24 right now, right? Peak is going to be 27, 28 when we're talking about can production still increase for a guy statistically over all NHL players in the history of the NHL since it's been recorded and measured. So potential for some better play here from Dante, I would say. Yeah, maybe he's a future heronic, huh? Yeah. Justin Shields, do you think Philip Sedino will be shopped at the deadline for a right side defenseman? 
Or is it a deadline or just draft, Justin? Because I, I think everybody's kind of up for grabs except for our boys that are always our pillars. Um, I, don't, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I think we've talked about Zadina a few times and the most value is probably here because in a trade, I don't think you're getting very much for him. Um, but uh, Keith Smith, I don't think we've heard a lot from Keith Smith. Um, I think a little tongue in cheek there, but say next year we run five lefties and then Mo. Um, and then Wallander and Shrod play on the right side. I I'm here for that conversation. Cause that was something that uh, Max Boltman brought up. Uh, but then his next article about Wallander was kind of like, well, fuck that idea. Cause Wallander immediately was on the left side in Grand Rapids. So that even Grand Rapids is like, yeah, let's, let's see if we can figure something out. Like on the North American side of the <laughs> hockey game first. So I, I, would love to find out that Wallander has progressed so much that they have that confidence in him. Cause Keith, if you nailed what our future is, think about how great Wallander is at that point, you know, like he's done so well in development over the summer through training camp, through the preseason that we said, let's roll. Not because I will tell you my confidence level that Wallander is on this roster in any form or fashion next year it's not the highest it doesn't mean i think he stinks in any way shape or form it just we saw how they played edvinson and i think edvinson's a whole nother level and wallander absolutely has played two amazing seasons by all accounts in the shl but my guess would be that that he starts in grand rapids so keith what i'm saying is if you're right everything has gone so perfect for Wallander at that point. I would be all about it. Um, um I like one uh, other name that we haven't heard a lot from is uh oh decoy yeah, Dylan Saber to Um GL GLJ, we haven't heard a lot from. How are you doing? Uh just saying Madison Bowie will be a free agent next year. <laughs> <laughs> GLJ. Yeah, bring him home. Um, oh, Justin did know. say uh, at at the draft, not the oh, trade. Yeah, document. Justin, I figured that's what you were going for. Yeah, yeah for sure. Good. And I, I think I think Sedina's all you know, like the 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 talks inside the Detroit Red Wings front office are always like, "What's this guy's out there? Let's see what comes a knocking." Um, but yeah, uh, I I do like uh, decoy making me feel good about my pick here. Demello is solid. Wallman two point potential. The only thing is, I mean, Wallman, I feel like we picked up and we have like a pillar for a long time. DeMello would be in and out. He would be a California burger chain, if I may. They have in and outs in Vegas. You may not. You know that? No. Uh, Jared, let's just trade for Alec Martinez. Great call, Jared. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I think just decoy and Justin Shields thrown out there. Uh, what's going on with Solder Blow? And uh, I think we have kind of the same question. Uh, it must just be uh, nursing a few boo boos. And then I think they also want to make sure he gets tons of minutes um, in the minors instead of playing more of a role in Detroit. So, you know, you know, I, I don't think we'll see him this season, but next season I do kind of expect him to have a role in the Red Wings, man. So. I think I'm excusing this season um, and this omission from his being on the roster uh, because of what next year is supposed to bring. Yeah, Ketzel throws out there too because we know that he's been a uh, scratch in Grand Rapids, uh, but he has been dealing with injuries too. So those scratches were not just, it wasn't like play, it was uh, dealing with some injuries. So I like the call out there by Ketzel. Ketzel is with Jared. He likes Martinez as well for going for a vet. Um, I don't. I'm I'm not there with you guys. Uh, maybe this is just I don't know. Maybe it's recency bias with what's been going on with uh, Martinez. But I, I I'm I'm okay. I I I'm good. <laughs> um, Keith, don't forget Wallander won the SHL U20 Player of the Year over uh, another of our other prospects. So there there is a chance. I. Keith, again, I yeah, this isn't this isn't about um like the level of play from Wallander at all. I I just am kind of looking at it as how they handled Edvinson. So that's that's all. Uh, but we do have to to wrap up here. Um, let me see. Yeah, Mike said we're on hour fifteen <laughs> in our private chat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, this is time we sail away. I do like the conversation. You guys always get excited when we start doing uh, our free agency talk uh, next week. Of course, Mike, season will be over. I think. Yes. Right. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, some more losses under our belt. That's what I'm hoping for. So that means. No, I think there's a little oh, more time because yep. we have five games All right, left. Yep, we're so. two, yeah, we're still two weeks. Okay, so last week I lied. So, yeah, we're still two weeks away from our uh, grading out the Detroit Red Wings roster as Little Caesars pizza items. So next week we will uh, we'll kind of just say goodbye to the season. And then the week after that we'll do full grades. All right. Maybe we'll take a little break. I don't know. Break sounds nice. We'll, fig we'll figure something out. It'll be yeah. Mike's birthday the week after that or two weeks later. So. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming aboard. Hope you had fun. Hit that like button if you got a chance. Subscribe if you're new to the uh, show. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. <laughs>